What's going on, everybody? It's Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. It's daily log number 13. And today was a, as expected, price action. Yesterday, I noted that today and going into even tomorrow, I will be not trading, not placing any trades. And this is just simply from experience, seeing what happens every single time FOMC hits uh, the day before and even FOMC the day of. It's the prices to me, uh, not as predictable, not as clean, not as one sided. You can see today uh, I got my analysis wrong from last night, but I'll go over basically how you can, um, even if you're wrong on your analysis, it doesn't mean that you taking a loss, right? Like for an example today, I predicted that we would come back into that fair value gap and that volume imbalance and then, you know, uh, go higher from there. That didn't mean to set a limit there. That means just to watch that that area and see if we can form the model around there. I ended up posting on the community tab. I was looking for, I believe, 3831 sell side to be taken. And we went ahead and did that. So maybe you're able to capitalize off of that call. There was a decent short, but I was just uh, not interested in today. I already got uh, yesterday good profit, so I'd rather wait for Thursday and Friday's price action. Going into today, let's look at the daily chart. Actually, I want to go out to weekly just to take a look real quick. With FOMC, you're going to hear my voice tonight. I, I'm probably just neutral. I don't really know what, what price is going to do. I, I still favor the buy side liquidity at the equal highs. But with FOMC tomorrow, who really knows what's going to happen? I posted in the community tab. Just let it play out. Let the news happen. Same way with last week with CPI. You let the news play out, and then we come in for the kill after. Don't be the one in there trying to uh, catch the big move, and then you get your stop loss taken out um, by 50 points because of spread, uh, because some some unre unregulated broker. So I highly suggest just sit on the sidelines. You're not going to miss anything. Uh, going into the daily chart, basically we just took out the previous day high, and we took out the previous day low. There was a small fair value gap here we traded back into. Nothing super clean to me. The four hour again, there was nothing in here that <clears throat> I would have went short off of on a four hour. There was nothing indicating to me that we were bearish. So that's okay. I got the analysis wrong. <clears throat> Looking at the one hour, this is something I did forget to note last night, was this fair value gap from here to here. Remember, I was paying attention to this fair value gap, so this busy here, and then I was paying attention to the volume balance if you extend that out in time. Even coming into New York, you should have already have known looking at the overnight, which is what I have been telling you guys, look at the midnight open and see if in your mind and price, logically, does it tell you that price is setting the high or low of the day? And what did we do? We took out the buy side liquidity. We traded back into a fair value gap. Now, this is the big tipping hand. I put this on the community tab as well. The SMT was a huge tip, tipping its hand that we were bearish. So NASDAQ failed to make that higher high, and US 30 made the higher high as well with the US 500. Or ES. So that was really cool to see. And that is the model in a sense. Once you get that, you're looking for the, the bearish signatures. For me, especially even, let's say, for me, when price runs a high like this and then drops, that to me, sometimes uh, I'm going to start looking at this as possibly invalid. And you can look at lower time frames. This is what I tell you guys to just wait for the model to form inside of your areas of interest rather than just entering on the area of interest. Because this is what I used to do is, you know, thinking that I was still correct. You know, if you go from swing high to swing low or inside of a discount for value gap or thinking we're bullish, but there's nothing in here, even on lower time frames, that nice displacement higher, return back into a fair value gap, and then displace higher once more. So that's what I'd like to wait for in those areas of interest. So Anything that retraces back into for value gap, order block, breaker, mitigation. You're waiting for that model on YouTube to form. <clears throat> so once we uh, 
extended beneath this fair value gap, I knew instantly, okay, we're bearish. And now we're targeting PD raise underneath that fair value gap or significant lows. So we are looking at this fair value gap you could have targeted if you watched ICT today. This was his overall target for his trade. And then you had the sell side resting here, which I mentioned 3831. And I believe we were still in this area when I mentioned 3831, just because I knew overall we were more than likely going to attack the previous day low, which is a major draw on liquidity. The thing for me, looking at it, if you look at midnight here, just to visualize that, we set the high of the day right during London and then displace lower. We have a small little fair value gap there we return back into. Come back into this fair value gap. There's no nice bullish displacement. We just bleed right through it. Looking at a 15 minute or five minute. Right, when price displaced into this fair value gap, there's nothing a nice bullish displacement to go long. So that immediately even if you didn't pay attention to this, that would not qualify for a trade anyways. And here, there wasn't much for me to really want to go short off of personally. I really didn't see much. There was really no nice fair value gap, so we traded back into. Even the 15-minute, I was looking at this, but I just decided to stay out because we were coming into lunch. I would have rather just not taken the trade. I don't really care, to be honest with you. So there was two fair value gaps here. I was just tape reading today. So just watching price, seeing how it delivered. This was my area of interest to go short. <clears throat> like price wasn't even that clean, to be honest. We <clears throat> traded above that fair value gap and then traded lower on the 30 minute. Small order block here. We traded back into, that's a inside of a premium as well, pretty deep premium relative from this dealing range high to the dealing range low. So none of this really made uh, much sense to me besides attacking the sell side here. So just a good journal, good log for future reference to keep for FOMC to understand that the day before is usually going to be unpredictable. You know, there's no reason to really put risk on if, if there's no need. <clears throat> I bet Thursday and Friday are going to be really nice, at least I'm hoping for. That way we can end off the week with maybe two more good trading sessions. And that's the way I like to look at it. So looking at tomorrow, what I possibly see happening. I, I would like to see a possible... I, it, it, I would like the, the buy side liquidity. Let's just put it at that. I like this. Overall, if we continue lower, I will point out some sell side liquidity points just to kind of tape read and pay attention to pay attention to 3817, this low here. I mentioned on the weekly zoom call, pay attention to this area here and how we react to it. And if we just slice through this like butter, pay attention to the low here, 3721, and ultimately 36, 37. That's what on the sell side of things, what I'd like to see. The buy side of things, I would like to see the buy side liquidity here. So today's high, 39.20 to be taken out. And then 39.64 is the overall target for me. I do believe we can reach into there possibly, depending on price action. I think that's going to be it for me today. I'll uh, update in the morning maybe with some charts in the community tab. Make sure to uh, definitely keep up to date and put on your notifications. And uh, until tomorrow, good luck and good trading.